Um, this penultimate category of um, tonight's show is sadly yet again more alt media bullshit. Um, these people need to be called out. Um, there's nobody else seems to want to do it. Um, and quite frankly, I've had enough of it. But we've also had problems in our own group, or the extension of our own group. And the Australian THI group split up again, with some seeking the money-based saviour programme that has worked so well for them in the past. Not. And the real Australians will carry on with the remaining group, I hear, which is good to hear. And to those people, it's all about the wheat and chaff at the end of the day. Is it Gary Chaff or Gary Taff? It matters not. Yet again, that man who writes heinous, dark and depraved novels for the Elites is involved again, when that clown was to be removed entirely from the group. The usual protagonists connected to the Kingdom of Manor within that group and no, Judith Anderson, you have not heard correctly that the TPC withholds funds and doesn't give it to the people in need. How quickly Judith Anderson forgets the help myself and other THI members gave her in the Zoom call to be making bogus allegations like this. It's shameful behaviour, I have to say. And no wonder you get a tax Judith engaging with people like Gary Taff for your inter information. I have instructed the Australian group to remove Stallard, Taff and Anderson. I took that decision. They are not too conducive to TPC Australia going forward and they, like the Life Force group they are a part of, are only interested in divide and conquer against the people. The funds in TPC Australia is not going to the Life Force group either, as requested by those three protagonists. Those who are in the Life Force group will not be the decision makers on where those phones go to either. And it's yet another example of life force harvesting ideas, members and funds for their own greed. And these are the same tactics Tank has done against our state and country groups since autumn of 2018, when he and other cohorts set out deliberately to wreck our groups, as stated by a few of his former cohorts who took part in it all endorsed by Kim Goguen, it seems. If it wasn't, she would have stopped it. They can't even act right within their own group. Another split up unfolding as we speak, as Life Force is being replaced by G-Spot Force. But to the other members of Australia, those people have gone to where their lower frequency level matches and we wish them well and time will tell on those people. Also what came up this week was Yellow Rose for Texas. It was kind of disappointing her um, input this week. But she was asked about choices and was Q and Trump a saviour programme? And the response was not particularly righteous or correct. Yellow Rose for Texas stated, I chose the Satanist agenda because I stated that Q was a PSYOP and a saviour program. And her response was, you're more wrong than you know. It mattered what side you chose and you've chosen the side of the Satanists. There are only two sides in a war. It was about you making a choice in order to be sealed. So if you don't follow Trump or Q, you're a Satanist. 
bit radical and duality based that. There are two sides in a war, she said. No, there are three actually. But if you think choosing a political party is part of the war, you are criminally short of the bigger and real picture. Politics is the theatre of distraction for adult children to follow and allow them to run their lives all whilst complaining of big government. Oh, the irony. And the Yellow Rose of Texas needs to understand the triality aspect. Trump and Q was not a choice. It became a directive. It also became very divisive, which will hamper this country for a long time to come. And it's all too simplistic and also ignorance of fact to say Democrats are evil and Republicans and or Trump are the light. Yes, Trump was a slight variation from other politicians, but he got in that position because he cheated and played the money game, whilst dancing with the Hebrew Anunnaki. And Yellow Rose of Texas needs to understand Trump was representing the Black Sun Group, which just because they are anti-Rothschild does not make them the light or for and by the people. You know, four years of his tenancy in the White House brought nothing tangible for we the people, despite major help from the trustee and the team. And Yellow Rose of Texas has got herself involved in the duality war, which has got nothing to do with we the people. It is a faction war between two versions of the Jewish elites, Rothschilds and the Black Sun. We the people are the triality, and as such should not be picking either of those two sides. That is the equivalent of offering the blue or red pill. Sensible people choose neither. That is often the hidden triality choice and that is ultimately your choice and not theirs. The choices being made now are not outside of you and never were. They're not based on external saviour programmes that, might I remind people, has failed. The three-pronged saviour programmes of Trump, Q and the trustee has all failed. Trump disappeared into the mist and is wheeled out at a few functions to keep relevant. And might I remind people, he lost to a senile old man. Who nearly two months now into his presidency and has not made a public speech. And what has Q done since the election? One post Q has done since the election, now four months ago, where are they? Where are their efforts to support the people who made them relevant for the past four years? In fact, that aligns with the trustee also. Where is her support for the people who supported her For over four years. And as for the trustee. I don't have to say too much more than that anymore. You can all see for yourselves the fall from grace. And the divisive bizarre behaviour and narrative coming from her shows. And that's a far cry from the person we saw on the Zoom call last April. Almost a shadow one would suspect, or perhaps a dual person. I warned in May, August, September and October, all three of them were in trouble unless they changed tack. They didn't. And what followed was inevitable to me, but not believed by many. 
and the election is four months down the line now. The shock value is over. And it needs us all to come together under the People's Club banner as one. And the original trustee knows that more than anybody else of why that is the case. It has come to my attention, and I'm getting this coming to my attention far too often for my liking, following now several different people coming forward of further disturbing shenanigans going on within and a part of the Life Force Assemblies groups. Deep state operatives in high positions running various assemblies. Criminal and rogue operations being ran out of one assembly in particular. Threats being made against members if they speak up. Warnings sent to the two leaders of the group, Kim and Tank, being ignored. And their members left to endure threats and intimidation alone. Complaints about GIA figures not being legitimate or acting in the right manner. For those who don't know, GIA stands for Global Intelligence Agency. Who are these people? Have they been vetted? Can we be certain these people are any better than the other intelligence agency groups? Earlier complaints of financial impropriety not addressed. In fact, several complaining of any questions being put forward are not being addressed or they are treated with hostility by the two leaders for asking the question and or booted from the group. And I hate to say this, but it's looking increasingly more and more like reality that life force resembles a wrecking ball of the alt media groups, including their own. Brought in to split up the movement, we the people had built up between several groups like Circle of White Light, Off Planet Radio, Jimmy Brent, National Liberty Alliance, and some others we had connections to around the world. And yet, they claim they are for the benefit of humanity. My question is, which humanity are they referring to? And like I've said all along, if you are acting for them by the people, I will support that. The example, if I think you're doing good things, is Anna von Wright. Me and her don't particularly get on, but if she puts something of use out, then I, I will put it in the show. But if you're not, and it doesn't matter who you are or what title you have, I will call it out. If the several complaints about that group are dealt with in a proper manner internally, it would not have reached my attention. And Life Force are no different to any other group, but their antics publicly and more so privately leaves much to be desired, and proof of them acting on behalf of our humanity is sadly very thin on the ground. The fact the trustee stated she would not fund the TPC is the confirming quote, and people within that group need to ask relevant questions as to where the leaders are taking that group and its followers. Recently, I'm told the trustee said, we the people don't need money to do certain things. But then she mentioned she had funded the Pentagon and was bragging about how the Pentagon is spending the money. After Tuesday's show, is that a good look for the trustee to claim? The trustee said all our bank accounts have $3,330 in. 
there's no evidence to support such claims. She also said all vaccines were destroyed and we did not have to worry about them. There's no evidence to support such claims again either. Like the claim in January where she stated she ended world hunger on the 8th. There's no evidence to support such claims. This is not the same person. Whichever format it operates at these days. And their predictions get worse by the week and fail at an alarming rate. But the problem is the people who listen to it. And worse, donate to something that has produced nothing tangible in 10 months. They have had four splits within their group and done everything to try and destroy THI and the TPC. And quite how someone operating for you for humanity acts like that is beyond my comprehension. But each to their own level. And their show is resembling a mix of Charlie Fraud, Drake, Alexander Meadows, and Kent Dunn all in one show. Impressive, I must say. But very sad for the people who knew Kim of 12 months ago. Including me. We did a piece on the cancel culture recently. And here is a classic example of it. Piers Morgan kind of divides opinions and he has a lot of valid things to say and what he said this week was actually valid. Was kind of forced to leave ITV's Good Morning Britain show following a row of a comment he made about the Duchess of Sussex, which is Meghan. And it brings the controversial host's time on the show to an end after six years. Now, ITV announced the decision after Ofcom said it was investigating his comments after receiving 41,000 complaints. So, Morgan Piers is punished, or Piers Morgan, sorry, is punished for giving his opinion, which is exactly what he's paid to do. But 41,000 jackasses ringing in to complain about someone's opinion is beyond ridiculous. Where were you people when your politicians are stiffing you over on a daily basis? And how can people be that offended for people like Harry and Meghan? who they've never met or likely to either. Elite royals who live off the backs of people have done nothing to help or develop society and 41,000 bots who are offended by everything complain on their behalf. How about being offended by poverty, homelessness, lack of food, funds or dignity many people suffer or the deaths in the care homes of the elderly or the fact that you've been on lockdown for a year under false pretenses instead 